Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! I'm a high schooler with a weekend job at a coffee shop. My co-workers who work weekends are James, the owner's son, he goes to my school, and he's a shift manager, but it's not a real formal thing. He's a friendly guy. Daniel, a college student who sometimes works weekends too. So sometimes customers will come in and just be angry about such little stuff, like literally blowing up about nothing. I don't know if they are in a bad mood or ready or looking for someone to take it out on or what, but it's a lot. Like how sad it is to have to be grown men taking your anger out on a high school or college kids. So James and I were joking about having a little fun with them and hopefully getting them off our backs. So one day, I was at work and some guy was having a temper about how we don't make the coffee hot enough. Which I couldn't do a thing about because I gave it to him right out of the machine. So James came in and was like, sir, is there a problem here? And the guy started ranting at him too. So he was just like, this is unacceptable. You're fired. I started acting really sad like, no, please don't fire me. My family needs the money. I need this job, please. And he played up being harsh, telling me to take off my apron and leave. The angry guy started to backtrack like, it isn't that big of a problem. You don't need to fire her over it. I didn't mean it. And James was like, we pride ourselves on the best customer service. Of course, after all that drama, I still had my job. We were just acting. And we've done it a couple of times. Whenever a customer will lose their timber at Daniel or I, James will storm in and fire us. And almost every time, the person who had come in angry will apologize and say that they didn't mean it. It's kind of satisfying making people realize their actions might actually have consequences. Anyway, I was telling my friends from school about this and a few of them thought it was a mean prank. To let someone go away thinking they had gotten someone who desperately needs the money fired. So am I in the wrong for this joke? And now for some comments. You're not in the wrong. I think it's hilarious. And maybe it'll teach some people a lesson about controlling their attitude. You're not in the wrong. Customers can be real jerks. Usually people are pretty respectful and reasonable. Even when they have a legit complaint. But every now and then there is a one guy or girl that comes in and just can't be made happy. They are the worst. I've taken the approach of killing the kindness and being sarcastically polite. Oh, okay, sir. I can microwave your coffee for you. Would you like two minutes or five? It's fun. Usually pisses them off more, but they can't do anything about it because you're not saying anything wrong here. I'm curious how the customer acts when they come in the next day or the following week and you're still behind the counter, though. This kind of reminds me of a video on YouTube where a kid, teen, goes to a pauper for a haircut and I can't remember what the prank was, but his intention was to prank the pauper with some kind of shock reaction prank. Well, someone had told the pauper about what the kid had planned, so the pauper had his own prank planned. When the kid did his prank, the pauper faked a heart attack and died right there on the pauper shop floor. It was hilarious. I know this isn't the same thing as your post, but... For some reason, it made me remember it. I, 18 female, am a cashier at a grocery store in my town. This afternoon, we had a large group of people come in together. Turns out, they were extreme couponing. For anyone unaware of this, it's basically people who clip coupons and shop for a crap ton of groceries and they hope to pay as little as possible. We see couponers all the time, but... I've never seen anyone go as crazy as this family did. So basically the mom had hundreds of coupons and she didn't bring any money because she thought if she didn't bring money, it would encourage her to do her best and get her groceries for free. Her family stayed by the card corral while she shopped and every time she needed a new card, they would give her one and take her full card. Eventually she finished shopping and she had about six cards of stuff. My manager shot my lint down and helped me bang, and then we started ringing. We get to the end and I'm ringing in the coupons when I get an error message on my screen that says, My point of sale reached the maximum number of coupons for the transaction. 
So my manager voided the transaction and we started again and tried to keep each group item together. But we kept having the issue with the coupons. We even tried multiple transactions, but my store only had 5 registers and there were people waiting to check out and we couldn't get the coupons to go through properly. So the lady just decided she didn't want to get anything after all and wouldn't be buying anything in her cart. Her total after tax before coupons was $789. There were roughly 500 items listed on her receipt per dime and her stuff wasn't just in cards. She was also purchasing flats of sodas, big bags of dog food on rolling carts and flats of canned food. And the rule at my store is if a customer decides not to buy something at the register, then a cashier has to put it all back before they can go home. I have been at work since 5 a.m. and I was scheduled to leave at noon because I had to put everything back. I have been at work since 5 a.m. and I was scheduled to leave at noon. And because I had to put everything back, I didn't get off work until about 30 minutes ago. She had taken 3 hours to shop herself. When she said she wasn't going to buy anything after all, I had a visceral reaction. I said to her, are you freaking serious? I have to put all this back by myself. I should add that she left the store in shambles. The customer started whining and so did her group. My manager got in my face and I think the phrase lazy brag got thrown around. My co-workers have my bag but my mom and dad were all you took a job at a grocery store, you should expect stuff like this to happen. Your reaction was out of line. So am I in the wrong here? You're not in the wrong. The customer didn't bring any money to a store. If the customer is not planning on paying for anything, why should they be treated as a customer? You're not in the wrong. But if anyone has seen extreme couponers, then y'all should check it out. It's pretty cool in my opinion. But that lady obviously is not a good couponer. I'm saying couponers so much. Couponers check with the store and everything beforehand, so they can make sure that the store will be able to handle all the coupons, along with the amount of food they get. And they always make sure to take at least some money, just in case they still might need to pay. This lady was seriously over her head. As much of a pain as it can be, extreme couponing is totally legal and ethical, and professional organization will be prepared to deal with it. Do not hate the player, hate the game. That jerk here is a manager for not having a contingency plan that would allow you to leave at the end of your shift. For starters, me, male 41 and my wife, female 39, have been together for 16 years. When she met me, I was at the height of my business and starting to go up from there. Even during the pandemic, my business is still booming. I had my own house that I lived in by myself, a couple cars and a cottage although that is unrelated. I own my own factory, refurbishing various re-engineered equipment, mostly HVAC stuff. About 3 years after we got married, she decided she had enough of work in odd jobs and making not so great money at it, so she expressed she wanted to be a stay-at-home wife. I had no problem with this. We don't have kids and don't plan on having any. So I saw this as a win-win as she got to stay home. And I came home to a nice house. After three years of this, she was tired of being a stay-at-home wife and wanted to rejoin the workforce. Since she could really only find odd jobs, I suggested she works at my shop. I pretty much created a job for her doing small admin stuff. Nothing crazy as I used to do all this by myself. Plus work on the floor. But this took a load off my shoulders. Obviously, she got paid a healthy wage for her work and I hired a cleaner to come in once a week to help us clean and maintain the house. On to the problem. One of my workers accidentally ordered 20 of one part instead of two. This was a bit of a big deal as now instead of being out a few hundred dollars, I am now out thousands. While I wasn't royally pissed off, this did put a large dent in my overhead so I had to offload these parts. Barely made my money back but that's beside the point. My wife however found out and absolutely berated this poor guy. I've had this guy work for me for over 10 years and his work is solid. He's a hard working man, two kids, another on the way and he's become my go-to guy for almost anything. I didn't hear any of the situation 
until I heard screaming from my wife that she was going to fire him and that he cost her hours of rework, camp budgeting and so on. This is simply not true as two phone calls and some editing on our books and everything will be right as rain. Tops a one hour affair. She and he finally filled me in and I told her to leave the room so I could talk to him. She refused and I asked again. And once again she refused. I asked one more time. And my worker was on the verge of tears and I yelled at her and told her, You're not the boss. I am. I make these decisions. Now leave. I talked it over with him. We made amends as it was an honest mistake. And he hasn't a screw up like this since he started so I'm not concerned about it happening again. My wife was livid, and after yelling about his screw-up has refused to talk to me. I'm clearly in the doghouse here, but I refuse to think I did anything wrong, as she was, in my opinion, being needlessly unreasonable and on a power trip. Am I in the wrong here? And now for some comments. You're not in the wrong. If your wife pulled that crap in any other job, she'd be fired on the spot. At work, she's your employee, not your wife. And she has zero business treating your employees like this. Employees with far more seniority to her, nonetheless. Everyone sucks. One of your employees started berating one of your other employees and threatened to fire him without the authority to do so. And you're entirely letting that slide because she happens to be your wife. If you're going to hire through nepotism, you need to be ready for uncomfortable conversations and make sure boundaries are drawn. You don't get to pick your battles. You're absolutely underreacting. You're absolutely underreacting to this outburst in a way that is letting down your employee. So my fiance and I are getting married in nine months. She's been dress shopping with her girls for months now. She found a dress she loved and bought it. I was too excited to keep it a secret. She showed me pictures of the bridesmaids dresses and I told her they were pretty. They match my groomsmen's suits really well. Anyway, she brought her dress out and asked what I thought. I specifically asked her if she wants the very honest truth or wants me to critique the dress or if she knows she loves it and just wants to show me. She said she wanted my opinion. She put the dress on and came out of the bathroom. And I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little disappointed. She is a beautiful woman and looks incredibly in anything, of course. But the dress completely dwarfed her and didn't really fit the wedding theme she has worked so hard for. She wanted the foresty, magical and whimsical type theme. Flower crowns on the bridesmaids, etc. But she chose a super sparky dress with a huge skirt, which looked nothing like the simple body hugging dresses she had been repeatedly showing me. She picked basically a huge Disney princess dress and I just didn't like how it looked at all. I was honest when I told her that I did not like it and that I was surprised she picked it because it just doesn't seem to match her and I just thought it was too much poof and sparkle. She got really quiet and stormed back upstairs and then stormed out of the house and went to her mom's. She texted me saying she couldn't believe I would say I didn't like it and what a jerk I am and has blocked my number. This is our first major fight and I'm just so annoyed because I asked if she wanted a real opinion and she just said yes. Am I in the wrong for telling her that I don't like the dress? Edit to add. Uh -huh, I read my credit card statement. The dress was $9,000. Might help explain the reaction. Oh, you don't like this $9,000 dress? Great, because I can't return it. Probably went through her head. I don't know what to do but sit here and laugh to be honest. Is laugh crying a thing? And now for some comments. Oh man, you are not in the wrong. But you're an idiot. She has bought the dress. Hundreds, likely thousands have been spent on it. You can't return it. So now she has to fork out a crap ton more money to buy her second choice gown or wear something she knows you don't like. No matter what, she will now feel crabby about her clothes on your wedding day. What possible good could come out of telling her that you don't like the dress she already bought? Advice. Tell her that with minor alterations, you would love it. That it was just that it didn't fit quite right to her. That some of the sparkles were wrong. Pick something she can fix. Then maybe you can save her feelings. I'd ask her to try it on again because you were just surprised 
that it was so different from what she had previously shown you. Tell her that now that you know what to expect, you can see it with a more open mind. Then when she tries it on again, sit back like you've already taken it in and let her know you like it and that your initial response was because you were expecting something different. Let her know that you've come around now that there are no surprises. Everyone sucks here. You are a fool for thinking she wanted an honest, blunt answer. And she is a fool for asking for an honest opinion when she didn't want one. Fools a pound. Okay, so this is an issue that I can deal with. I, 28, am 6 months pregnant. Me and my husband have been discussing who can be in the delivery room. I told him my mother was going to go obviously and he said he would want his mother to be there too. I would be fine with that but the hospital will only let two people in. I told him if she went, he would not be able to go. He said he was expecting me to get rid of my mother and to let him go instead of her. But I told him that was not happening. We're now in an argument and he said he's going to go to his friend's house. It's been two days and he still hasn't returned. He isn't answering my calls either. And now I don't know where he is. Am I in a wrong here? And now for some comments. Absolutely not in a wrong. He wants you to bump your mother out of a major procedure for you so that he and his mother can be there? Really? You get the last say on this. You should have the people who will support you there because you being supported makes childbirth easier and creates better outcomes for you and your baby. If that means your mother is there, that is good for everyone. The fact that your husband doesn't understand that to the fact that he'd leave his pregnant wife to sleep at a friend's and not answer her calls tells me he has no clue what childbirth is about. Ah, uh, this sub gives me anxiety with the amount of people that procreates with these self-absorbed and oftentimes lazy significant others. There is no way there weren't major red flags waving and screaming at them. And yet, here they are in these situations. You're not in a wrong. As I was reading this, I was internally screaming. It's so infuriating. Now I'm anxious that I'm going to find myself pregnant with someone who reveals himself as an unsupportive jerk once it's too late. I just can't fathom how you'd stay with someone like this. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.